And finally tonight here, a very creative solution to a housing crunch. When one New Yorker had to clear out of his small apartment, he didn't head for a hotel or a friend's couch. He moved into one of the most unlikely of places for all to see. Cool. This is my place. Mark Milkoff invites complete strangers into his home, which isn't a stretch since his home is in the middle of a giant furniture store in suburban New Jersey. Yes, he's been living in a furniture store. Is the bed comfortable? It is. I just took a nap for the first time. And, and, um, <laughs> Melkoff asked the furniture company, IKEA, if he could move in while his New York City apartment was fumigated for cockroaches. About 80% of my actual furniture is IKEA products, and I got this idea. He thought the company could return the favor. Yes! IKEA said yes. They know a good marketing ploy when they see one. On Monday, Malkoff unpacked his two suitcases, and almost immediately, porters followed. Hello. Oh, hello. Hi. Oh my gosh. Happy housewarming. Thank you. <laughs> you guys, you guys want to come in and see my room? He gave tours of his home, here. far from picture perfect. Um, the sinks don't work. I also jump on my bed a lot too. And that's not all. Is the bathroom working? Is the shower working? No. For how many days? Turns out, Malkoff takes showers in the staff locker room, and his morning coffee in the cafeteria. Some of IKEA's workers apparently missed the memo. Came to work today, real thinking everything was okay. Come to realize I didn't read the bulletin or whatever was on and find out there was a guy living here. Completely alone. Other workers be have become his new best friends, like Jarvis, the overnight security man. Does it get scary? It does, it does get scary. After midnight, uh, all the lights shut off and then you start hearing the squeaks and sounds and whistlings. Melkoff has documented his every moment here and it's not the first time he's done something like this. Last year, he visited all 171 New York City Starbucks in just one day. But this time, his moment in the spotlight is coming to an end. The free rent run ends tonight. The experience has been one of the best weeks of my life, but I'm not going to be moving into Target anytime soon if that's what you're asking. And by the way, Malkoff's wife, Christine, wasn't as thrilled with the new digs. She's been staying with family. Probably good for the marriage. And that is World News for this Saturday. I'm David Muir from all of us here at ABC News. Thank you for watching tonight. Good night. And finally from us tonight, there is a remarkable video ricocheting across the internet of a teenager doing a backflip in a wheelchair. That's a first. The story of the teenager and how he began doing tricks in his wheelchair is pretty remarkable as well. He says he was just having fun, but he's become an inspiration. From our partners at ESPN tonight, here's Tom Rinaldi. In a place made for wheels, Aaron Fotheringham's are just a bit different than the others. People call it wheelchair skateboarding, and that's just like, oh man, it's its own sport. A sport Aaron calls hardcore sitting. Born with spina bifida, Aaron moved from braces to crutches to a wheelchair. By the time he was eight years old, Aaron stopped watching and started rolling at a local skate park in Las Vegas. Within a year, he was pulling tricks and competing against skateboarders and BMX riders. Essentially creating a new sport, Aaron had an idea for a new trick one he believed had never been achieved by anyone in a wheelchair. People keep coming up to me and saying it'd be cool if I could do a backflip on my wheelchair. I want to try it. After countless falls and brutal crashes, on July 13th, 2006, at an extreme sports camp in California... Some people had left because they're like, oh, he's not going to land it today. And when I did it, just all these, a flood of bikers and skateboarders came over and were congratulating me. It just felt so good. So That's fun. just the coolest. The backflip video posted on the internet created a sensation internationally. Aaron, you know, was interviewed by reporters and everything, and it was kind of a whirlwind opportunity. And this little boy who can't speak any English, because we're in Germany, but just a little bit of English, he comes up to me, and I don't know that he knew that I was Aaron's mother. And he holds up this poster to me, and he hugs it to his chest, and he says, mine Aaron autograph, mine Aaron autograph. And I remember just sitting there and bawling, thinking, wow, <laughs> that's my kid. This is how he rolls now. At 16, known by all his friends as wheels, Aaron seems just another teenager dropping and carving and spinning. 
but to another child in a wheelchair, like four-year-old Zachary, he is magical. You go first. No, you. you. Can do it. <laughs> no, you. Okay. I'll, I'll help you, and then I'll go. After seeing that backflip, Linda Putty brought her son Zachary to Las Vegas to meet Aaron in person. The connection was immediate. <laughs> He's a hero. He's a hero. Um, he thinks Aaron flies. I hope that the other kids, like Zachary, can find that too, because I didn't know what to do with him until we saw Aaron. And then I knew that was, um, that gives us a direction to go. Just seeing their faces watching me makes me want to help them. And even if they don't go to the park, just want to be able to help them on a live a better life. <laughs> For ABC News, Tom Rinaldi, ESPN. Aaron's really something. And if the Sound of Music is a movie classic and a holiday favorite. Everyone knows the story of Maria, the governess, then mother to an aristocratic Austrian family. Seventy years ago, the famous family emigrated to the United States, and all these years later, their legacy lives on, with Maria's grandson now taking the lead role. The hills are alive these are not the hills of Salzburg, Austria, but instead of Stowe, Vermont where the Von Trapps, the family made famous by the sound of music, settled after immigrating to the U.S. in 1938, buying 300 acres of farmland, building a lodge, and renting rooms while on tour as the Von Trapp family singers. Johannes is the youngest of Maria's children. The question I'm most often asked by people is, which one were you in the movie? So then I have to tell them that uh, I was in the movie, but she couldn't see me. The real Maria was pregnant with Johannes when the family escaped Nazi-occupied Austria. While raising his own family, Johannes tried to make his son's childhood as normal as possible. People would ask as a kid, you know, oh, are you related to that family? And we'd come home and say, hey, mom, pop, uh, you know, someone asked us again about that movie today. What, what's the story with this movie? And they'd say, oh, don't worry about it. It's just this small movie about our family history. Girls in white dresses with blue satin sashes. But this was no small movie. And eventually, even Sam was drawn into the family business, convincing his dad that they should get the word out that they're still here. I'd like to invite you to come visit us here at the Trap Family Lodge. But his father is still resistant to other moves to commercialize their history. And they do have an off switch. <laughs> Still, father and son do see eye to eye on most things. There's an unmistakable Austrian theme to the lodge, and both have resisted a sort of theme park. We get questions all the time. Why don't you have uh, the Sound of Music soundtrack playing 24-7 in your lobby? And the response is generally to, to preserve the sanity of our front desk staff. <laughs> and their own. Our pianist in the lounge downstairs knows that I really don't like to hear him playing uh, songs from The Sound of Music because I've heard them a few times, a few hundred thousand times. So if he sees me walk in, he just segues into something else. <laughs> it's very funny. That's not to say they don't embrace the film and the role of their cherished late mother, played by Julie Andrews on screen, and so many visitors off screen. Every once in a while, I'll uh, look out the window and see someone uh, pirouetting in the field uh, with their arms out, pretending they're Julie Andrews. And of course, the movie that made the family famous is coming up next right here on ABC. That is World News for this Sunday night. I'm David Muir. From all of us here at ABC News, thanks for watching. I'll see you here tomorrow. Good night.